Chapter 18 The Corners of the Earth Lakshman groans under the jar of water on his shoulder. Rama, under his own jar, grunts back. Don't start fires unless you're willing to do the work to put them out. Drenched with sweat and exhausted, they come over the rise at the peak of the tallest mountain in the region. They had not even bothered to try racing the monkeys, just taken the jars up and started walking. They notice the sun is on its way down now. Hanuman and Sugriva sit at the gate formed between a pair of stones the size of houses. They help the brothers put down the jars without spilling them. Sugriva hoots with monkey pleasure. There's a stream not too far down that way. Lakshman hisses. We saw it on our way up. Rama insisted. The sons of Dasratha do not fetch water. They carry it. Rama shrugs his now free shoulders with a laugh. We needed the exercise. Centers the mind. Everything is ready by now. Quite. I hope you are hungry. Sugriva takes them by the hands and pulls them through the stones and into a grotto. Inside, twenty-some anthropomorphic animals sit chatting with each other over a spread of fruits and breads, sitting on soft leaves and grass. I am afraid wine will not be served. I have decreed that until Sita is found, there will be no intoxication of any kind. Rama nods. I think a little juice will suit us for now. My stomach is the size of an ant's. Lakshman hisses next to him. Rama ignores his brother to continue. How far can we see from the top of this? He imagines being able to see as far as Lanka from the mountain top. Suddenly, a dam breaks in his mind. He had been holding his heart together by blocking any thought of Sita this whole time. In truth, it just meant that all of his thoughts were of Sita, and he stood blankly in the white room of his own mind. Now, exhausted as he is, he collapses at the thought of looking from this tower and seeing Lanka somewhere in the distance, his wife, his other half, held there captive. Lakshman catches him before he hits the ground. Juice, he grunts at Sugriva and pulls Rama to a boulder to sit him up against it. Rama flutters open his eyes. I miss her, Lakshman. I try to hold it back, but it's like holding the ocean in an oiled cloth. I need her back. Everything I see is a mirror, and in that mirror I see her face. Sugriva brings them each a coconut. He looks worriedly at Rama as he drinks, but says nothing about his sudden faint. Lakshman soon devours the meat of each coconut. Rama pulls himself to his feet. I would like to get a good look from the summit. Sugriva agrees. Of course, and then we can start the summit. They follow him up the branches of a nearby tree and step on to a set of crudely carved stairs, which they follow to the top of one of the gate stones. Sugriva calls out with a shriek, and heads peek out from the leaves of the trees to shake the mountain with a roar in response. Every one of these will be in our army, Lord Rama. Look in each of the four directions, to each corner of this earth, and you will see an ocean of my subjects at your disposal. Rama's devastation waves over his face. Hearing nothing, he spins around, his eyes gliding around the monkeys which completely surround the mountain. He sees no ocean. He sees no isle of Lanka in which his soul is imprisoned. He sees only a white room from which there is no escape because it lacks the floors, the walls, and the ceilings. He hears the voices of a million monkeys. 
but in none of them is the sound that will set him free. Lakshman catches him again to help him stay standing. Again, Sugriva worries for his friend, but ignores it. He calls out to his army, The summit begins! The mountain roars back, Yes! To the music of screaming simians, they descend back into the council chamber. This hollow at the top of the mountain, the brothers sit between Hanuman and Sugriva. As Sugriva makes introductions, Lakshman watches his brother's face as, trained in the art of kingship, he listens to the long introduction of each member of the war council. An hour passes before any real business can be conducted. Rama is silent, respectful, attentive. Lakshman can barely contain his impatience. The silence after the last of these great leaders is introduced stretches. It becomes clear to Lakshman that Rama is expected to say something, and he does. Sugriva, my dear friend, far be it from me to command your subjects. You know the business to be done better than I could hope to. And so Sugriva organizes these animals into separate search parties, which he sends in the four directions. They are to find Sita and the home of Ravana. Sugriva, who while running from Bali so many years before, saw much of the world, explains to the leader of each party where they are to go and what they are to see. Of course, as Hanuman well knew, the Isle of Lanka is to the south of India, and so that is the most important direction to search. The southbound party is to be led by Angada, with Jambavan and Hanuman accompanying him. By sunset, preparations for the journey are underway. The four groups know their routes. Sugriva brings blankets for Rama and Lakshman. Hanuman stirs a pot of soup. They sit together in the dancing shadows of a fire. Sugriva talks absently. Throughout the world, there is not a place empty of some spirit or other. Demons, gods, oceans, mountains find a way to fill every gap in reality. You, Hanuman, you outclass them all. You're more graceful than the wind, more determined than an ocean rolling down a hill, steadier than the Himalayas, and as wise as any of the gods. I am sure that yours will be the group to find Sita. I do not doubt she is in the south. That is the way we saw that chariot fly. That is the way she must be. Lakshman shudders. I cannot guess what state she must be in. Do you remember the day when we went hunting and lost our trail for the night? He laughs. She built a fire the size of a mountain to keep back the animals of the night, she said. It was for us to find her. She is wise, my wife. I don't doubt she is finding some way to help us find her now. Rama's voice is hollow, as though it is making its way out of a cave. Hanuman, you will be the one to find her? He does not wait for an answer. Take this so that she knows you are coming from me. He weakly fumbles at his hand to detach her ring from his finger. She will know when she has this that I am with you and through you, her. It is our wedding band, the only jewelry I've had since we left Ayodhya. Hanuman, saying nothing, kneels next to Rama to accept the glinting golden ring. He takes it in his hands reverently folding his palms around it. He ties it tightly in the hair on his head, bows deeply, and jumps over the walls of the grotto. Rama eats a little and falls into a deep, exhausted sleep.